Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com. Let's go take a look at Firefox 9 for Android. For those of you who are interested in alternate web browsers for your Android-powered device, Firefox has been around for well, a little while. We had some early Fennec betas and alphas, and now we've got full-blown Firefox. And today they've released, or earlier this week they've released, and today we're going to show you Firefox 9, which adds some cool HTML5 stuff, some speed, but it keeps with the flavor that we're used to with Firefox for Android. So first of all, let's go back to our home screen over here. The Firefox logo is the same as what you'd expect on a desktop browser. Opening and launching it is relatively quick. It takes a few more seconds to launch the first time. In this case, it was already in memory, but overall it's pretty quick. Now, one thing you will want to keep in mind, this is about 15 megabytes. It's going to take quite a bit of time to download over a 2G and possibly even over a 3G network. So keep that in mind. You may want to do it over Wi-Fi. Once it's downloaded and installed, it's pretty quick. So let's come and look at uh, some of the basics. First of all, you can see there's some ice cream sandwich kind of interesting things. I believe it's ice cream sandwich. You've got your fave icon over here and your reload button over there. They don't really fit this space. It feels kind of awkward, but that's probably because this is a much larger resolution screen. This, of course, being my GSM Galaxy Nexus running ice cream sandwich or Android 4.0. If you pull over to the side, that was a little gesture that you saw me do, just pull to the side. Now you can see your thumbnails of the, the tabs, essentially, that you have open on the screen. You can quickly and easily switch between them. So let's come up here, for example, and load in Pocket Now. Over on the other side, we can set that as a favorite. Okay, add that to the home screen if we want, edit it, all kinds of cool stuff go back and forward and get into our settings. It's kind of interesting. I have a menu button down here, the legacy menu button, and then I have a settings cog right here that do kind of the same thing, but kind of different. Let's see that again. So down here's your menu. You can get into preferences there. That's the same thing as if you were to just hit that. So a little bit of redundancy, kind of interesting. While we're here in preferences, if you want to go to the about page, which is what I showed you first, you can select that button. Language you can predefine or have it auto detect. Essentially, the website that you go to is going to tell you what language it's in, and that's what this is going to use. If you want to hard code it to something, you can do that. Of course, if it's not written in that language, that's not translation. That's just how it's going to interpret the characters. The start page, you can come in and set it to whatever you want your current page, a blank page, or the Firefox start. I've got it set to the default, which is Firefox start. And Syncing. This is very cool. You can sync your contacts across, uh, essentially across the cloud. So if you've got Firefox as your browser on your desktop computer and you have favorites stored there, you have uh, usernames and passwords stored there, you can sync this all across so that it's the same experience on your mobile device as it is on your desktop device. It's not two separate experiences. You have the same things on both sides. Privacy and security, what you'd expect. You can use a master password to get into your password screen. Uh, if you want to be able to reformat the, the screen when you zoom or the contents on the screen when you zoom, you can do that. It's off by default and it works pretty well being off. But if you run into some weirdness, go ahead and toggle that. Showing images and enabling JavaScript. If you want speed, uncheck both of those and it'll speed things up quite a bit. And uh, show character encoding just for some, uh, I don't even know why you'd want to do that. If you know, let us know in the comments. You have a download manager now, so if you want to see your downloads, you can look in the list here. And this is what sets Firefox apart from everybody else. Firefox has plugins. And when I say everybody else, I'm talking mobile devices, because everybody on the desktop has plugins and, and whatnot, right? So over here, you can look at what my current plugins or add-ons are. I've got my Google integrated search installed, my Amazon integrated search, Twitter integrated search, and Wikipedia integrated search. All of those came stock with the browser. If I want to get more, I can search for them, or I can see some of the more popular ones. I can essentially get a tutorial, what is an add-on. One of the most popular ones out there is Adblock, Adblock Plus, if I can pronounce that. Essentially, this blocks ads. You might like that, you might not. 
websites make their living off of displaying ads. You don't like looking at ads, so kind of weigh that out. And uh, once you've gotten over the, uh, the moral dilemma, make whatever choice you want there. If you want to make your text bigger, you can do that here. You can also do that in the settings for your, uh, your whole operating system. This handles it a little bit better when you're looking at it in web pages. Clear mobile history, you can add a clear history button to the Firefox preferences so you don't have to dig in an extra level deeper. So kind of cool. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. And when I say a whole bunch, a whole bunch. Now keep in mind, the more add-ins you add, the slower your browsing experience is going to be. Speaking of browsing experience, how is it? Well, that's kind of two sides to a coin. Let's go ahead and look at uh, this Verizon Motorola Droid Razor coming out. Go ahead and open that up. Now, I'm on Wi-Fi. It's a 20 megabit connection down. And you can see it is taking a little bit of time to load in. Initial page loads on Firefox seem a little bit slower than in the Chrome browser. When you scroll, you're not getting kind of partial page scrolls. You're getting blocks of just black that then is filled in, which takes just a moment. You have your pinch to zoom, and that's one of my other qualms. If you take a look at this, again, big black swath while it's loading. The text looks good. It scrolls well when you're doing it slowly, just not when you're jumping because you, you, know, you have that big block. So here's my other qualm. You look at this. I now have something that's too wide to fit on the screen, so I'm going to scroll to the side. Well, eventually when I scroll to the side, I'm gonna get that bar. The bars essentially are now way off to the side. You can get them by, you know, anywhere you are just by scrolling in from, well, you should be able to, from scrolling in from the side of the screen, but you can't. It's the edge of the browser window. So that makes these kind of things hard to, to get at when you are zoomed into a site. Not all that cool, but kind of a, uh, you know, the other side of the, the coin there. Once you get this thing loaded, it really excels in HTML5 and JavaScript. If you've got any kind of HTML5 on here, it's fast, blazingly fast. CSS3 transformations, really fast. I don't have any good examples to show you, however. Just visit your sites and take a look. That's where it excels. Once the content is on the device, once the page is loaded, then interacting on it is really, really quick. Quite a bit faster, in fact, than the Chrome browser that comes with the Android operating system, even the new one that comes with uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. So, really quick look, showing off a couple things. You guys want to see one more? I always get uh, kind of uh, in trouble in the comments for only showing the Pocket Now website. So, let's go ahead and show another one. Here's Apple, for example. Loads up pretty quick. In Gadget. And I haven't loaded any of these, so they're not cached at all. This is just a straight load from the web across the Wi-Fi to the device. So Engadget takes a little bit more time to load. It's a, a heavier site as far as content goes. Again, the big black block while scrolling. Overall though, once it is loaded, the scroll is pretty good and pretty fluid. Um, I like that quite a bit. Um, and so we don't play favorites. Let's go out to Microsoft.com. So you can take a look at that load there as well. So, kind of quick, still loading in a little bit. It doesn't even look like you'd imagine it's supposed to be because this is trying to be a mobile page and it's uh, not doing really well at that. So, hey, Microsoft, you might want to take a look at that and see if you can make that experience a, a little bit better because I think it's supposed to look like that. Anyway, so showing off Firefox 9, if we can get back to the uh, wherever I found that. Firefox 9 for Android. For Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi.